So let's start in a standing position toward the back of your mat. And just get acquainted on your feet. You can take a peek down and if you put your hands on your hip bones, you can see that your feet are right underneath those. So there's your hips are stacked over the feet. And then if you lift all your toes off the mat, you should feel the base of your, or the, the toe mound of your big toe, of your pinky toe, and either side of your heel. So you feel like four corners of the feet. And then let your toes grip down as extra support. So your feet are actively pressing into the floor. Strong foundation. And then start to activate your legs. So you can feel your inner thighs drawing in and up toward each other. So you feel the legs, the muscles in the legs start to activate. Your tailbone tucks down as your navel pulls in toward the spine, supporting your lower back. Your fingertips can reach down toward the ground and feel how that opens up the chest and the collarbones, palms facing out. Take a big exhale here. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Feel in your body, your head over your heart, over your hips, over your heels. So standing in this straight posture, but allowing your body to relax into it, not, not holding it so rigidly. Relaxing the forehead, the jaw, the neck and shoulders. As you inhale, feel the crown of your head reach up a little bit higher. And as you exhale, ground down through the feet a little bit deeper. Feel the soles of your feet and the crown of your head reaching in opposite directions. So that you feel the space between the crown of your head and the soles of your feet growing a little bit longer with each breath. On your next inhale, raise both arms up and over the head so the biceps come alongside the ears, palms facing each other. And as you exhale, ground down through the feet again. So we're feeling the space from the soles from the outside edges of the feet all the way through the fingertips. And then notice if the ribs are starting to flare open and you're getting an arch in the back and try to tuck the back under so that your spine stays nice and straight, knitting in the bottom of the ribs. Again, each inhale, the arms reaching a little higher, each exhale, grounding down. And you can go ahead and interlace your hands and bring the palms of your hands to face up toward the ceiling. So you're getting a nice stretch down the arms now and the shoulders. And as you inhale, bring the shoulders up toward the ears like you're gonna yawn. And then as you exhale, draw the shoulders back down away from the ears. So we'll do that about three more times. Inhaling, hunching the shoulders up. Exhaling, drawing them down. Twice more. And I'm just getting a little tired now. And we'll now switch the interlacing of your hands. So it's the opposite way. So it feels a little funky. And then we'll do that again. So the palms reaching up toward the ceiling. As you inhale, shoulders come up toward the ears. As you exhale, shoulders draw down. And remembering to knit in the bottom of the ribs, noticing if anything else is that your posture is changing. Staying with your breath once more. Great. And now you can bring the palms to each other now and you can interlace all the fingers except for the pointer and the thumbs. You're making this bend shape and then inhale, reach them up high and exhale, bend over to the right. So you're in this half moon shape with the body like this and you're feeling the space from the outside edge of your left foot all the way through the fingertips. And again, noticing those bottom ribs, knitting them back under. So you're really keeping it the center line of your body in line with each other, hands in line with the feet. Every inhale, reach a little bit higher. Every exhale, see if you can bend a little bit deeper. One more breath like this. Awesome, and then next inhale, reach back up. You can switch the interlacing of your hands and we'll take that to the other side. As you exhale, bend over to the left. 
So now really feeling that space from the outside edge of the right foot all the way through the fingertips. The arms are gonna feel super tired now, really warming them up. Two more breaths. Awesome, inhale, reach back up to center and exhale, slowly lower the arms down by your side. Release, shake them out, shake out the shoulders. <laughs> awesome. You can open and close the hands a few times. Start to warm up the hands, the fingers. Maybe do some circles with the wrists. And then on your next inhale, go ahead, reach the arms up. And exhale, we'll dive forward. So you can hinge at your hips, lead with your heart and try to come down with a flat back for as long as you can. And then once you need to curl up the spine, you bend the knees, allow the belly to rest on the thighs, release the head. And just let everything dangle here in your forward fold. So bend the knees as much as you need to. This is not a hamstring stretch first and foremost, this is a spinal stretch. So you're really focusing on feeling the space from your tailbone through the low, middle, upper back, back of the neck and crown of the head. Relaxing the forehead and the jaw. <sighs> Taking big exhales. You can allow the head to dangle, yes and no. And even with the knees bent, start to reach your sit bones a little bit higher so that you're finding some more length in the backs of the legs, even though the knees are, are bent. And then notice where your weight is located on the feet. Are you more on the heels? Are you more on the inner or outer foot? More on the toes? And since this is a forward fold, we wanna encourage our body to go forward first. So, Bring your, the weight of your feet more toward the balls of the feet. So it's almost as if you could slide a piece of paper underneath your heels, just ever so slightly, bringing it more toward the balls of the feet. Feeling the toes be active. Take two more big exhales. Maybe sighing it out, communicating to the body to release. Mm. Awesome. And then on your next inhale, rise up to a halfway lift. So you can bring your hands to your shins and the tabletop in the spine. So you pull the navel in and up toward the spine and bring your heart forward so that your collarbones and the shoulder blades are equally broad. And you're using your core a lot here. So your gaze is directly down in front of you so the back of your neck stays long and focus on feeling the space from your tailbone through the spine and crown of the head. Perfect. Exhale, release, forward fold. Inhale to your halfway lift. And then we'll bring our hands to the hips and continue to come up with a flat back using your core. Perfect. Awesome. So as you inhale, we'll raise the arms up and then exhale, dive forward to your forward fold. Walk your hands forward to a downward facing dog. And this can be like a short down dog to start if you want. Just making sure that your hands are shoulder width distance, feet are hips width distance. And when you look at the wrist creases, see that they're parallel to the front edge of your mat. And your fingers are spread so wide that you feel the skin in between the fingers starting to stretch. So same thing as what we were doing with the feet, doing that with the hands, actively pressing into the floor. Foundation is strong. Awesome. On your next inhale, step your right foot in between the hands and we'll rise up to our warrior one. So you can bring the arms up. Your back toes are gonna face the front left corner of the mat. So your hips, if there were lights on your hips, they're going straight in front of you. So your hips are squared to the front. Perfect. And you can always widen your stance if you need to, or bring the feet closer together to achieve this. Inner thighs feeling like they're pulling toward each other. Front knee is over that front ankle. Perfect. Breathing. And feel your tailbone tuck down slightly so you increase the stretch in the left hip flexor and lengthen your lower back. 
Perfect. Feeling the weight evenly distributed on both feet, even the outside edge of your back foot. Great. Perfect. And then as you inhale, start to reach into the ground with that front foot to straighten out the front leg slowly. Hands can come to your hips. And you inhale, lift your heart toward the ceiling. Exhale, hinge at the hips just like we did before into your pyramid pose. So you can stay floating like this, use it if you want some more core work, or you can bring your hands down to frame your front foot and allow your forehead to reach toward the shin to increase the hamstring stretch. And wherever you are, continue to pull your right hip back. So you really wanna focus on feeling the space from the right heel through the back of the leg and the hip. And you can always have blocks or something or rest your hands up a little bit higher if you need to. <sighs> Taking big exhales and using your ujjayi breath, which will really help you out. So inhaling and exhaling through the nose with a slight restriction in the back of your throat as if you were fogging up a mirror, <sighs> but with your mouth closed. So it's this audible breath that keeps a lot of the energy within your body. So it'll help us in the poses. Two more breaths here. Perfect. And then on your next inhale, we'll re-bend that front leg. So the knee comes over the ankle and then rise the arms back up, warrior one. Awesome. And then as you exhale, step your back foot forward, release the arms, mountain pose, top of your mat. Beautiful. Next inhale, raise the arms up, reach up, get nice and long. And exhale, dive forward, hinging at the hips, leading with the heart, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale and fold. Great. This time we'll leave the left foot where it is, step your right foot back, and we'll come into warrior one on the other side. When you're ready, arms rise up. Perfect. So yeah, warrior one, we really want the, your feet can be like they're on two separate train tracks and your hips are square to the front. So you're continually feeling your hip scissoring, right hip coming forward, left hip coming back, just so that they're even. And again, tucking that tailbone down so you increase the stretch in the right hip flexor, feeling length in the lower back. Perfect. The feet are actively pressing into the mat. Bottom ribs knitting back under slightly. Just feeling all the components of this pose. Every pose in yoga can be um, as active as you want it to be or as not active. We really want to Think about all the little components, all the little muscles that are working. Great. And on your next inhale, bring your hands to your hips and slowly by reaching into the ground with your foot, let your right le left leg straighten out. And then you can lift your heart slightly as you inhale. And again, exhale, hinge at the hips to your pyramid. You can stay wherever. You stayed on the other side, just so that we do the same thing on both sides. And again, really focus on feeling that space from the, uh, the left foot through the left hip. And continually feeling a slight pulling back in the left hip to exaggerate that stretch even more. and feeling the back of your left knee being bright and reaching down toward the mat. That'll exaggerate it also. Perfect. So two more breaths. As you inhale, finding a little bit of length in that leg or length in the spine. And then as you exhale, surrendering a little bit deeper. Perfect. On your next inhale, re-bend that front leg. Rise the arms up to your warrior one. And then exhale, step your back foot forward, release your hands, mountain pose. Take a moment here to close the eyes. Observe the body, observe the breath. And bring your hands to heart center. So your palms are 
making contact, your fingers are making contact with each other and your thumbs are pressing towards your heart and your heart is lifting back towards your thumbs. Tune into your heartbeat. Let's remind yourself why you showed up today. On your next inhale, raise both arms up toward the ceiling, reach up, get nice and long, maybe a slight back bend if that feels good. And then exhale, hinge at your hips and dive forward, release to your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, release. Now leave your right foot where it is and we'll step the left foot back to warrior two legs. So your back foot's parallel toward the back edge of the mat and rise the arms up warrior two. So your hips are gonna be squared to the side of your mat. Your front knee is over that front ankle. And if it feels bad for any reason in your back foot, you can try to point the toes a little bit more toward that front corner of the mat, if that feels better. And your front heel can either be intersecting your back arch or in line with the back heel. Your arms are really proud, equal, equally lifting, reaching from the heart center. And your gaze is over the front fingertips. And feel your right knee reaching toward the pinky side of the foot, just so that you feel this right hip kind of rolling under, tucking under, really opening up the hips. Perfect. And again, the tailbone feeling like it's tucking down, so you feel length in the lower back, and the crown of the head reaching straight up so that your torso is very straight. Awesome. The inner thighs feeling like they're drawing toward each other, just so that you feel that extra strength in the legs. Lifting the toes for just a moment, activate the feet and let the toes grip down. Uh, flip your front palm and as you inhale, reverse your warrior. So reach up with your right hand first and then reach back when you can't reach up any further. So feeling the space from the right hip crease through the side body all the way through the right fingertips. Breathing. Inhale, come on back to center. Warrior two. And this time we'll exhale, reach forward, and then bring your right elbow to rest gently on top of the right thigh and reach your left arm up alongside the left ear, extended side angle. Feel the space from the outside edge of your left foot all the way through the left fingertips. Feeling them reaching in opposite directions, getting super long but also remembering to keep a little bit of length from the right hip through the bottom of the right ribs. So your side bodies are staying pretty equal. Perfect. Awesome. And on your next inhale, come on back up to center, warrior two. And then exhale, let's cartwheel the hands down, frame your front foot, lift your back heel and step your right left foot forward to your forward fold. Release for a moment. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach all the way back up. Maybe a slight back bend at the top, getting super long. And then exhale, let's fold all the way back down. Forward fold, release. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Awesome. Now this time we will leave the left foot where it is and step your right foot back, warrior two legs. And rise on up, warrior two on the other side when you're ready. So again, checking in with your alignment on this side. Noticing the difference in the side. So your front heel can be intersecting the back arch or in line with the back heel. That front knee is right over the ankle but reaching toward the pinky side of the foot because it's gonna naturally wanna come in. Feeling the left hip rolling under. Arms are proud, reaching from the heart, staying with that breath. Also, I should have said this on the other side, but another tendency is that this hip is gonna come out like this. So you wanna press the right hip back in so that your torso stays nice and straight. Perfect. Stay with the breath. You can bring your gaze over the left fingertips, maybe closing the eyes and just really feeling the shape that your body's in, feeling the sweat, feeling the difficulty of such a seemingly simple pose.
Perfect. On your next inhale, reverse your warrior. So bring your right left palm to face up and then reach up and then back. Feel the space from the left hip through the left fingertips. Perfect. Inhale, come on back to center. And then exhale, reach forward, keep length in the side bodies, and then gently rest your left elbow on the left knee, reach the right arm up alongside the right ear. Awesome. So seeing if you can sink down a little bit deeper so that your right hip comes down in line perfect. And you're really staying in those warrior two legs. And you can even imagine someone standing on the outside edge of your right foot and someone else is pulling your right arm further. So feeling them really reaching in opposite directions. Continuing to roll that left hip under, feeling that open up. Perfect. On your next inhale with control, come back up, warrior two. Just a moment here. And then exhale, cartwheel the hands down, frame your front foot. Lift your back heel, and this time let's step back to a downward facing dog. Awesome. So let's spend a little bit of time here in this down dog. The focus of a down dog is to lengthen the spine. So again, if you need to bend the knees, keep them bent. You can keep them bent as much as you need to, as long as you need to. But let your focus be to lift your hips as high as you possibly can so that you really feel the space from your fingertips through the sit bones. And then feel as if your armpits are facing, could face each other. So you feel broadness across the shoulder blades as well as the collarbones. Your heart is reaching toward the thighs. And the hands are really important here. So really keeping those fingers spread wide, really reaching into the corners of the hands, the mound of your thumb, your pinky and your pointer finger, as well as the tips of all your fingers. So like a suction like grip. And then if the knees are bent, you can start to slowly walk out your dog. So you let each heel reach down toward the ground, taking turns, straightening each leg, waking up the hamstrings. And really drawing the navel in toward the spine so that you find some more length in your lower back, lifting the sit bones just a tiny bit higher. One more breath. Perfect. On your next inhale, rise up to your tippy toes and wave your body forward into a plank position. So your shoulders come over the wrists, heels reach back, crown of the head reaches forward. So your neck stays nice and long. Awesome. And then feel this, the collarbones broad as well as the shoulder blades. Awesome, one more breath like this. And then as you exhale, lift the sit bones back and up, down dog. We'll do that one breath per movement three times. As you inhale, wave your body forward into plank. As you exhale, lift the sit bones back and up, down dog. So let this be a dance, move with your own breath. And let your breath guide the movement. So as you inhale, you wave forward. As you exhale, you push back. And then once you're done with your three rounds, let's meet back in a plank position. And then option to bring the knees down here, we'll bend the elbows alongside the ribs and slowly lower yourself in one piece down to the mat to lay on your belly. <sighs> press down in the big toes, zip up the legs so they're close to each other, press down in the pubic bone. And as you inhale, lift your heart to baby cobra. Your chin stays tucked and the neck stays long. Exhale, release. Now, as you inhale, pull the navel up to the spine and keeping the elbows tight and toward the ribs, feel like you're pushing the ground away from you as you come up back either through a plank or through tabletop and we'll tuck the toes, lift the hips down dog. Awesome. This time, let's as you inhale, bring your shoulders over your wrists and bend your knees so that they hover over the mat just for a moment. So you're in a tabletop hover. 
Awesome. And then allow your knees to find the mat, untuck the toes. Let's do a few cat cows here. So as you inhale, allow your belly to reach down, the chin reaches away from the sternum, tailbone reaches up. And then as you exhale into your cat pose, pull the navel to the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. So again, moving with your breath, let your breath guide the movement here. Close the eyes, and I really encourage you to tune into what this feels like, not worrying about what it looks like at all, but just seeing the shape that your spine is making and taking any movements that feel good for you to make. So maybe wagging the tail, looking back toward either hip, maybe taking circles with the shoulders or the neck. Just really allow your body to move however it feels good. Feeling the fluid moving around the spine. Let's do five more breaths, free movement, or even sticking with the cat cows. That feels really good. Awesome. And then, when you're ready, or when you're done with that, we'll get into the shoulders a little bit more. So leave your hips right where they are. Walk your hands forward. Melt your heart down, puppy pose. So your forehead or chin can come to the mat or a block. And just like in down dog, you're reaching the energy up through the space in between the sit bones. So your hips are reaching high. Your heart is surrendering to the floor. Take three more breaths here. Relaxing the forehead, relaxing the jaw, relaxing anything that's not necessary to be tense in this pose or to be active. Awesome. Great. And then slowly you can start to pull the navel up to the spine, walk your hands back to where they were before, tuck the toes under, lift the hips up, down dog. So notice if this down dog feels a little different now that we warmed up the spine a little bit more. Maybe you feel yourself a little longer. Or maybe it doesn't feel different. That's okay too. Just notice. When you're ready, bend the knees, look up and step up. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Let it go. Inhale, rise up to stand, maybe slight back bend at the top. And exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment to pause here. You can let the eyes stay closed. Feel the heartbeat and feel your breath. When you're ready, inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, dive forward, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Plant the hands down, leave your right foot where it is. Step your left foot back, warrior two legs again, and we'll rise up warrior two. As you inhale, flip your front palm and reverse your warrior, reaching back and up. Up and back. Exhale, back to center. Inhale here. Exhale, come forward into extended side angle. Nice and long on the left side of the body. Great. Inhale, come back up, warrior two. This time we'll reach into the ground, straighten out the front leg, and we'll set up for a triangle pose. So you might wanna step your back foot in just a touch. And we'll flip the hips, come back and reach your right arm forward as far as you can. And then once you can't reach forward anymore, you'll let the right fingertips reach down and the left fingertips reach up. So the goal of triangle pose is really to get everything as long as possible. So you wanna keep your neck long as well. You wanna keep, you can pretend there's chopsticks from your hips to the bottom of the ribs. So you really try to keep your side bodies as long as possible. Perfect. 
Awesome. Let's do another breath here. Great. And then you can gently rebend your front leg, rise back up to your warrior two triangle thing, and then straighten out that front leg again and turn your feet parallel to each other. So you're facing the side. Hands can be at your hips. Inhale, lift your heart slightly. And exhale, dive forward to our wide leg forward fold. So you can allow the spine to curl. The legs can be bent. And the same thing as in our regular forward fold. You just focus on lengthening the spine first and you can let the hamstrings come second. So you can lift the sit bones as high as you can. And surrender in the head and the face. Let everything in the torso be heavy. Let your torso and gravity help you deeper into the pose. And it's okay that the knees are bent. You're still stretching the hamstrings even when the knees are bent. <sighs> Permission to play in any pose. If there's maybe you want to take turns bending each leg so that you stretch into the inside of the opposite straight leg. Or if there's anything else that your body's asking for. Maybe just stillness. Three more breaths. Mm. Mm. And then really slowly, when you're ready, you can begin to walk your hands up the legs and roll your body up one vertebrae at a time. Head is last to come up. And pause for a moment at the top. Just let the blood settle back in. Let your vision return if it's left. And then when you're ready, you can turn your left foot to face out. So we come into warrior two on the other side. Or whichever side we didn't do before. I think it's the left foot. Yeah, so you're facing the back of your mat. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So you're in your warrior two, inhaling here. And then flip your front palm, reverse your warrior, reaching up and back at that length in the left side of the body. Inhale, come back to center. Reach forward, extended side angle. Right arm reaches up alongside the ear. You feel the space from outside edge of the foot through the fingertips. Awesome. Inhale, come back up to center, warrior two. This time we'll straighten out that front leg. Maybe step your back foot in a touch and we'll come into our triangle pose. So your hips can come back, reach forward with the left arm as far as you can. And then when you can't reach forward anymore, you let your left fingertips reach down, right fingertips reach up. And the crown of your head stays in line with the neck. So you really keep every single limb in your body as long as possible. Feeling your pelvic floor pull in and up toward the navel. Lower belly stays active. Awesome. Great. One more breath. And then you can put a slight bend in your front leg, come back up, turn your feet parallel to each other again. Actually this time, let's turn our feet to face the corners of the mat and your heels are facing in. So we'll come into our goddess squat. You can bring your hands to heart center and exhale, let your hips calm down and the crown of your head reaches up. So we're staying a little lifted here first. So your knees should be over your ankles and then your, the outside edges of your knees are pulling back behind you so that you really feel the hips opening up. Kind of like sumo squat. Great, and then you can bring your hands to the insides of the legs or the knees with the fingers pointing down. And then as you exhale, dip your right shoulder down, look over the left, inhale to center, exhale to the other side, left shoulder down, look over the right. Oh, maybe getting some snap crackle pops. You can do that a few times. It feels really good. Do it a few more times. Awesome. 
And then once you come back to center, you can straighten out the legs, turn the feet parallel, and release into your wide leg forward fold again. Is the sound working all right? My headphones keep beeping. It is? OK. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Oh, awesome. So yeah, if you want to do a little bonus shoulder stretch, you can interlace the hands, bring them behind your back, and let the fists pull you forward. That can be really nice. Or you can always just grab opposite elbows, or yeah, grab whatever's available. Just let yourself be heavy. Let's do two more breaths. And then you can start to straighten out your spine. So come into like a halfway lift, but in your wide leg forward fold. So your hands can come to the ground in front of your face almost. And then turn your heels to face each other and the toes face out. You're, so they're a little bit wider than your hips. Hands come to heart center. Elbows inside of the knees, hips sink down, heart reaches up. Malasana or yogi squat. Yeah, so your elbows or your palms are pressing into each other. Your wrists are even with the elbows so that your elbows help open up your hips. Heart reaches into the thumbs, thumbs push back into the heart. And then very slowly let your sit bones find the mat, release yourself to a seat. You can shake out the legs, shake out the arms. Reset. Why does this keep beeping? You can hear me okay? Okay, I don't know why it's beeping. All right, so you can turn the face forward on your mat if you're not there. And let's just do a classic forward fold as we arrive. So you can grab the flesh of your sit bones and pull it back so that you feel the bones pressing down. And if you're sitting up here and you naturally come backwards, then you can just Stick like a pillow or something under your hips so that you feel yourself naturally hinge forward when you release. And let's start with this a little bit active. So you can breath, let the toes reach toward your shins and feel the energy reaching through the backside of the legs. As you inhale, lift your heart and the crown of your head so your spine stays straight. And then as you exhale, you just hinge, like maybe an inch, maybe a centimeter. And this really will stretch in deeper to the hamstrings if you're stretching like this more actively. Inhaling to find length, exhaling to hinge. But if you would like this to be a little bit more restorative, you can just release the muscles in your legs and release your head. Allow your spine to curl and just surrender. Take five deep exhales here, slowing down your breath. Awesome. And then very slowly on your next inhale, you could begin to walk the hands back toward the hips, bring yourself back up to your seat. And then you can cross your cross the ankles, place the hands in front of the shin, roll over to come into your tabletop. And a step touch deeper into the hips. So you can bring your right foot outside of the right hand. So we're in like this wide lunge pose. And then tuck your back toes under, lift your back knee, and scoop that back so that you have a longer distance between the feet. So this is in your lizard pose. If you want to keep this active, you can keep this back leg lifted, or you can allow the back knee to drop down, untuck the toes, and stay here. So you want your hips to be heavy, sinking down. Maybe eventually coming onto the forearms to stretch deeper into the hips. But staying wherever you are and really focusing on breathing into your right hip. 
breathing into the left hip flexor. This is your ujjayi breath is really going to help you. Here. So let your breath be super audible. Let your exhales be loud and proud. Communicate to your body. Release. When your body, or when you can hear yourself exhaling, it sends signals to our body that we're okay, we're softening, we're releasing. Do three more big breaths. And then you can slowly come onto the hands here on the forearms. And begin to imagine there's a string at your tailbone. Lifting your sit bones back and up. So that straightens out your front leg. Heel toe that one time so it's in line with your hip. And let's hold here for just a moment to get into the right hamstring. And then continue to heel toe your right foot off to the left side of the mat. We'll come into our pigeon pose. So you can bring the hands down, allow your right knee to come behind the right wrist, and release into your pigeon pose, keeping length in the spine. If that is too much or if that doesn't feel good for any reason, reclined pigeon is an option. So you can bring your ankle on top of the thigh and pull it in. Let's do it like that. Whatever. Let's see, Again, so just communicate to your body through your exhale. Just relax your forehead. Relax your jaw. Soften the neck to the shoulders. Just scan your body here and notice wherever there's resistance. Your hips might be resisting this, or your mind might be resisting the stretch quite strongly. And when it does that, it really wants to distract us from the sensations that are happening. Try to convince us that we're incapable of standing. So just notice when the mind is doing that. And instead of distracting yourself, bring all of your attention to those areas that are resistant. So if you're feeling resistance in the hips, instead bring all of your attention to the hips. Sit so fully in that discomfort. Breathe into that discomfort until, until you feel your body start to accept using that same energy that's being used to come together, to resist, use that same exact energy to instead soften and to spread. Three more exhales. Slowly, we can come onto the hands, walk the hands back towards your seat, tuck the back toes and walk that knee in, and then bring your right leg back into a three-legged table, shake out that leg, let it go, maybe do a few cat cows or something to set before we do all of that on the other side. When you're ready, you can step your left foot up by the left hand. We'll set up for lizard pose. So you can tuck the back toes under and find that right distance between the feet and allowing that knee to come down if you did that on the other side. And just honoring where your body is on this side. There's no need to force yourself to come into the exact position you're in on the other side right away. Notice the natural difference in both sides and let yourself naturally unfold on this side as well. Every exhale, 
see if you can just allow your hips to be a little bit heavier or allow them to surrender to gravity. And you can also imagine your inhales traveling into those uncomfortable areas, so traveling into the hips. And then your exhales are softening this area. So the inhales travel there and they energize this area, they energize the hips. And then your exhales spread softness and surrender and release. Take three more breaths right where you are. And then you can come back onto the hands and step up for our arms. And imagine that string on your tailbone that slowly lifts your sit bones back and up. And then you can heel toe your foot once just to have it in line with the hip and fold for a moment into the hamstring. Take a little break. Keep you pausing a little bit. And then when you're ready, you can continue to heel toe your right foot off to the left side of your mat. Bring your hands down and allow your left knee to come on the wrist, release into pigeon pose on the other side. So if you take a peek back at your right foot, just make sure that stays in line with the hip. Yeah. And then keeping that length in the body as you come forward. So again, honor where you are on this side. Notice where your mind is at. A lot of times our some more intense emotions are stored in our hips. So these past few poses, we've been really focusing on this. Not uncommon for some emotions to come up, either in the form of thoughts or in the form of physical reactions. Now, When things come up like that, it's for a reason. And we need to feel our feelings. We need to release them. And they want to be released. And if we don't, that's how they get stored in the body as trauma or attention, not. When the opportunity does come up to sit in this discomfort and soften, it's really beneficial to us on all levels. Emotionally, just breathe through. Allow your jaw to soften even more. The forehead and thighs are soft. And soften your stomach. Take five more exhales here. Find that space of stillness. Completely surrender. When you're ready, you can slowly begin to walk your hands toward the hips. And tuck the back toes, come back into your table, shake out that leg. We're finishing up here. So what you can do is cross your ankles behind you and just set your hips back. So now we're in. I love that. Okay. And you can scoot forward and bring the soles of your feet to the ground. We'll slowly lower down to lay on our backs, hug the knees into the chest. <sighs> Maybe rock side to side, massage the back. So we'll do a twist on either side. So when you're ready, you can bring the soles of your feet to the mat. 
Shift your hips off to the right and allow both of your knees to come to the left. And you can bring your arms up to a T-shape, look over the right shoulder and really feel the space from the outside of your right knee through the right shoulder and fingertips. Feel this ringing out of the spine. Breathing into the discomfort or any sensations. When you're ready, you can guide your head back to center, guide your knees back to center, and the hips. And then bring both of your hips off to the left, and let both the knees come to the right. Other side, twisting. And feel your navel pull in toward the spine and feel how that creates just a little bit more space to twist. Feeling the stimulate digestion, wringing out the spine. When you're ready, gently guiding the head to center, the knees to center, and the hips. No rush at all. You can windshield wipe the legs back and forth, massage out the glutes, release the lower back. And then when you're ready, Bring both of your feet to reach up toward the ceiling. Shake them out for a moment and just let all the muscles in your legs fully release so that they feel like they're just resting in their hip sockets. You can reach your arms up to the ceiling and do the same thing. Feel all the limbs resting in their sockets. The four corners of your torso pinned against the mat. Allowing all the organs in your belly to settle into place. The entire length and width of your back flat against the mat. Letting the hands and feet grow a little bit warm and tingly. This change in blood flow. And then when you're ready, you can come into your happy baby, reaching for the outside edges of the feet or the thighs, whatever's available. Just opening up the hips to the ceiling, maybe finding stillness or maybe rocking side to side. As you're ready to do so, you can gently release the feet coming into your final your final shavasana and the legs letting them be separated from each other the arms separated from the body with the palms facing up feeling this five-pointed star shape that you're making with your body Fully surrendering. Allow every muscle in your body to feel safe and supported by the mat beneath you. No need to hold anything up. Just let yourself be supported.
Feel your forehead soften and expand. Feel your jaw release. And feel the triangle of the two eyes and the mouth get wider. Let your brain rest toward the back of the skull. Let your shoulders be heavy into your mat. Let your arms be heavy, your hands fully relax. As you start to notice that gentle pulsing sensation in both the hands, And watch that pulsing sensation travel up the arms, up the shoulders, spreading across the collarbones to meet at your heart. Now feeling the unique pulsing rhythm of your own heart. Let that pulse spread down your torso, down the rib cage, down the belly, softening all the muscles in your belly, down the lower belly and the pelvic floor, the glutes. Spreading down the legs. Into the feet and all 10 toes. Feeling that natural pulsing of your feet and toes. Your awareness now coming to the very crown of your head. Notice the pulsing of the crown of your head and the forehead, the space between the eyebrows. Feel this total body awareness, becoming fully aware of the blood running through your entire body. Allowing all the healing benefits of this practice to soak in fully. Allowing yourself to rest for the next few moments in the silence. If you would like to lay longer, please feel free to do so. But if you're feeling ready to make your way out of this final pose, just allow my voice to guide you. You can begin by calling air back into the body. Feeling yourself fill up from the toes to the fingers to the head. On your inhales, filling up fully. You can start to wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. Maybe rock your head side to side. If you would like to, you can reach the arms overhead for a nice big morning stretch. 
I'm curling into a fetal position on one side. With Gently, as you're ready, make your way up to your feet. Meet with our hands at heart center. And thank yourself deeply for your practice today. May this continue to heal you throughout the rest of your weekend. And may you bring some of this love into everything you do and to everyone you see. Namaste.